come hang with Radical Rex. He's the raddest, baddest, fire-breathing Tyrannosaurus ever to shred prehistoric pavement. This bad boy on wheels is out to save the dinosaur race. Check Rex thrashing on his board, sporting his flame breath, busting out with killer jump kicks, swinging on vines, and blasted out screen shaking roars. Excellent. Slam through ten wild levels of jamming jungles, freaked out forest, haunted dino graveyards, piranha infested underwater caverns, and inside a giant dinosaur. Rex keeps you grooving while you keep him moving past twenty of the meanest prehistoric nasties to rock his dino world. No sweat for Rex, he's too hip to be extinct. Oh boy. Radical Rex from Beam Software and Activision, released in 1994. This, um, it's a platformy game. Uh, released as Baby T-Rex on the Game Boy in Europe. Published by Activision, developed by Australian game studio Beam Software for the NES, Genesis, and Sega CD. There was a Microsoft port, published by Pico Interactive in 2019. Wow, just like two months ago even. The game stars Radical Rex, a skateboarding, fire-breathing Tyrannosaurus who must save his land and his girlfriend Rexanne from an evil magician. Because they had those. Um, it's, this is probably the closest thing I can think of on the Super Nintendo that is Sonic, other than that weird Speedy Gonzalez hack to make it a Sonic game. Uh, mostly for the way the game plays and looks and the the level design for sure. Uh, Rex can do a few things that Sonic can't do, including a roar that kills or hurts all enemies on screen, fire breath, which can immobilize enemies, and a bubble spray, which you can use underwater. Uh, Sethron is replaced by a weasel named Skriditch in the Mega Drive and CD versions. Despite this, the weasel acts the same. Uh, it's got some mixed reviews. Super NES version, Game Pro's Bonehead complained that the music becomes repetitive and the player's skateboard goes so fast you often miss power-ups and jumps, but praised the cutesy and humorous graphics and simply enjoyability of the gameplay. Summarized the game as about as good and as endearing as the successful Joe and Mac games. Uh, Next Generation, on the other hand, gave it a negative assessment, criticizing the incongruity between the cheerful, goofy player character and the murky backgrounds. Said that though he agreed the gameplay is often reminiscent of Joe and Mac, it's consistently flat, unmotivating, and not up to par with other platform games. Uh, GamePro stated the Genesis had less colorful graphics and more muffled sound than the Super Nintendo, and missing the entertaining intro rap, which I did not include in this video. You'll have to find it for yourself. Retains all the essential elements that made it fun, though. Uh, they concluded it would appeal to younger gamers, but is too easy and cutesy for older gamers. Um, let's see, EGM gave it a 5, Next Generation gave it a 1 out of 5, and Nintendo Life gave it a 3 out of 5. Is it great? No. Is it terrible? No. Um, between this and a game we looked at like Oscar, I would rather play this. Uh, but between this and a game like Plock, I think I'd rather play Plock.